right, welcome back third graders. We are going to walk through now how to um, complete your warp for your weaving. So <clears throat> once you move forward with your weaving, your weft, you will eventually use analogous colors. But today is all about the warp, the backbone of the loom. And you also want to make sure at your table that you also have a placemat. But the placemat is because our artwork is very fragile and if it drops, that paper will give it a cushion in order to not break. I have my placemat in front of me. Now, the first step today is getting your placemat out and writing your name, so I'm doing that now. Now the second thing is you have handouts at your table. All right, so the first thing is you're gonna label your loom and you're gonna label it right around your edges. All right, so we're labeling our numbers from one to 11. And what we're going to do is we are going to now do that on our clay. So if you can see me here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to go find a one. Any of them can be one. Some of you might have just had nine, and that's okay too. Nine or 11 holes. And I just labeled it around my clay from one to 11. The warp thread is sort of like the background of, I mean the um, backbone of the weaving. So if you look here at this rectangular loom, um, similar but different to what we're doing, um, you can see the warp is this long thread here on this loom. And then you can see that the weft is what is dangling here on what's called a shuttle. So we would be able to send the weft back and forth, back and forth. The way that I remember it is we would send the, that back and forth weft and right or left and right how we can start with a knot so with our knot we're going to get a warp thread there will be some of these at each table and what i'm going to say for the length of it is let's say an arm's length so right now i'm holding out my arms you can see me really big really wide because we can cut the extra off but we don't want too much so i only cut from the end of the thread and then i put it back for somebody else to use it. Um, and what I'm going to do first, and this worksheet at your table says the same thing, is I'm going to first tie a knot in the one, in the one. So a knot, we're going to get our little thread, we're going to put it into the one, okay? And we want to always hold this at all times because it could break. But now I'm going to pull this through. And I'm going to show you how to make a knot now. So I have this pulled through at the one. I found my one hole and I have it pulled through. So what I like to think of this is, is one really long thread over on this side and one really short thread over on this side. What I'm going to do is make a little fish. So it's as if you're drawing a fish, and I'll draw that fish for you here. We have a really long thread, and we have a little small thread. And that's kind of like if we were drawing a little fish. That's why I call it a fish knot. Um, so little fish, that's how we remember how to make a knot. So what I want to do now is take my little piece, after I make this fish, and put it around the big one and into the hole, as if you're tying a shoe or something, and then pull. And I have to do that twice, just like if I'm tying a shoe, I need to do it twice. So I'm making a fish, making a fish out of my thread, put the little one around the big one, into the hole, like if you're tying a shoe, and pull again. So that was two fish knots. And now I have it attached to my loom. I have the warp thread attached. Now your color that you use may be black, just to keep it simple, like my I did mine. Um, or you could use a color from your analogous color scheme as well, if it's there. Either one. So the pattern, sorry, the pattern that we are going to use is called across through the gloss. Hello, neighbor. Across through the gloss. Hello, neighbor. So that's the pattern. It's an A-B pattern. First, it tells you on this paper at your table every step to take 
1 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 2, 2 to 3, but that sounds really confusing. So I'm going to help you remember with a pattern. So we're going to go across through the gloss, which is the glossy side, the painted metallic side, to the 6. So I'm going to go across through the glossy side, not on the empty side, the glossy side. So I'm going in through. Think of under over when we did our paper weaving. Um, so this thread, similar to when we did our paper practice weaving, is what my pink um, would be when we first cut our loom. So that's, <clears throat> I'm going to go across through the gloss, and it, on your worksheet it says six. So I'm going to find my six, and I'm going to go across, but through the gloss, on the front, and make sure it's coming through the six hole. Mine is. So I'm going to pull, 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 pull. You can do it. Across through the gloss. So I'm going to find the six. And I'm going to pull it through. Across through the gloss. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hello neighbor. And I'm going to bring this thread now to the seven. And that's what it says on the worksheet here. It says Hello neighbor, six to seven. And it's, it's confusing now, but it, it's a pattern eventually, so you'll get it. Six, not to five, but to seven. So I'm going to go to the seven, and I don't have to go through the gloss this time. I just go right next to it. Hello neighbor, six to seven. Seven to six is night neighbor. So now this is my start. Now I do that again. So I go across through the gloss on the front to the... Two. On your worksheet, it says seven to two. So I'm going across through the glossy side on my two. Pull, pull, pull. You can do it. You can do it. And then hello, neighbor. So hello, neighbor. Two's neighbor. Can't be one. We already did one. It's three. So two's neighbor, three. Hello neighbor, through the back, not the front, not the gloss. Hello neighbors through the back, right next door, from the two to the three. Hello neighbor to the three. Now, what's the pattern? We just did hello neighbor, so next is across through the gloss. I'm going to go across through the gloss, and from three to the next number, which is eight. So I'm going across through the gloss to the next one in my row here, to the eight. And you're starting to get a feel for this complex pattern. I'm making a little star here. I went to the eight. Now, cross through the gloss. Hello, neighbor. So behind on the white side, I'm going through the 9, from 8 to 9. And these numbers are on your worksheet. It'll say 8 to 9. So I find the 9, put it through. Hello, neighbor. Now it's across through the gloss. So across through the gloss this time is not going to bring me to the back one, not to the next one, the next one. So now it says 4 to 5. So I bring it from... Sorry, from the 9 to the 4. I apologize. From the 9 to the 4, across through the gloss. So from the 9, I'm going over to the 4, through the glossy side, through my uh, metallic side. That's glossy, shiny. That's texture word. And then, what do you think is next? I went across through the gloss, and now is Hello Neighbor. So now it's from 4 to 5. So I just went from the 9 to the 4. 9 to the 4. And it's Hello Neighbor now. From the 4 to the 5. So it says it on your paper. Hello Neighbor. 4 to 5. Now I'm going to fours, next door neighbor, which is 
right next door to the four. Next door neighbors don't need anything fancy. They're just right on the back side. Think of your neighbor coming to say hi, coming through your back door. Not the glossy side. They don't need to come to the front door. They're your neighbor. They come over all the time. Neighbor is on the back. So, I just went from four to five. Hello, neighbor. Now what I'm going to do is go to from five to ten. Across through the gloss. So now I'm going to go from my five to the last time was nine. Next door neighbor to nine is ten. So I'm going to go across through the gloss to the ten. And last but not least, we just did across through the gloss. And now we have to do one last trip through the back door to our neighbor's house from 10 to 11. And pull. Now, this is the challenging part. I'm going to show you what to do, but you can also raise your hand and ask for help. Um, we basically want to bring this uh, warp thread to our center point. Now when we bring it through our center point, we want to find the area of this radial design here that may need some help in the other direction. So right now this looks like it's all kind of pulling to that direction. We want to bring it to the center. It's a center point. So I obviously want to pull it from about here and pull these all back to the center to get it nice and even there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to grab it in here by put, putting this thread through the hole there where it needs some help, some umph, an extra lift. I'm going to put it through that area. I'm pulling and now that center point is in the center. So mine just ripped, which is unfortunate, but the good thing is this is actually your warp thread. So is this the pretty part of the uh, loom? The weaving? Nope, this is just the backbone. This is just the part that um, the front weft um, concentric circles will cling to. So right now I'm just tying another knot. I guess I pulled a little too hard, which is okay. That happens. I tied a knot, knot back on. I'm going to trim it up a little bit so that you can't even tell, and we'll move forward. And obviously, that's one of the best parts about art, is that there are no mistakes. You can always just keep moving forward. So I'm now going to pull that through to the part that needed a little bit more attention, and then pull it back to my center point. And I'm going to tie uh, two fish knots there. So let me show you that. I'm going to bring it around the center point and pull. Not too hard, so I don't break like this. And pull some stuff. I'm going to put it like that. It kind of looks like a, hey, a radial design, similarly to our radial design that we painted. Now, what I will do is remind you of how to do this fish knot here. So I'm going to have it all pulled tight so we have a center point. I want to make a fish, so I'm going to wrap it around once more while making a fish. So what I'm going to do with my fish you can always raise your hand for this step too. I have the fish's body here, and then the tail is right over here. And I'm just going to stick the, bot the long thread through and pull. Now I can do one little knot there. I might need another one. I think I kind of got it with the one. But if you may need a second knot as well. Now any extra thread hanging off, like this long, 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 long string here, can get trimmed. So I'm just going to find my center point, make sure it was tied, and cut a little bit out. Now that can do not cut too close or you'll have to do it all again. So thank you for joining me in learning how to make your warp threads. Now we have our comparison between our circular warp and our rectangular warp. And eventually, we're going to be able to compare our own circular loom weaving 
with this weaving that we see here because you are on your way.